Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. And if you guys are new here, welcome. So I received you guys' messages and comments regarding Laomi's tweets, which are right here. Me being from the ballroom scene, being a legend from the ballroom scene, started walking balls in 2002 and seeing how balls were from then, how it evolved till now. I have a couple of things to say about this. So as far as Laomi and how you feel about her, I don't really care about all that. You guys can either hate her or you guys can love her. It is what it is. But one thing's for sure, two things for certain. Us ballroom people are passionate about our shit. Our culture is everything to us. And we see many times from the past to the present, even to this day, we have people using ballroom culture, ballroom language, ballroom antics, ballroom dancing, and not even including us in their productions or in their in their materials or shows or, or TV or music videos and all of that good jazz, right? We've seen stuff so many times on fashion runways, fashion branding, um, music videos, television shows, TV shows. Um, just banter, verbiage, vocabulary, terms, all of that good stuff, right? And they don't include actual people from ballroom. How are you going to talk about and reference ballroom and not use the people that are actually in ballroom? Pay us, use us for all the things that you guys are mentioning and talking about. It's that easy. It's that simple. Yes, I know that we um, started using actual ballroom people on ballroom shows, um, hence Legendary on HBO Max. That is great. But there's so many different platforms and so many different things that are out there that actually don't use ballroom participants. Yes, we have now. Now we're having artists and fashion brands actually using people that are from ballroom, which is a great thing. But keep in mind, it wasn't always like that, you guys. So I think that's where Laomi is kind of stemming from and that she does never want to go back to that place where they were referencing ballroom culture and not using and paying actual ballroom participants, you know, which made no sense to us. We came from an age of um, doing stuff very underground, in basements, at YMCAs, at local churches, just, you know, hole-in-the-wall places, literally hole-in-the-wall places, to now doing stadiums, big venues, events, um, theaters, you know, all of that stuff. So it's great to see the progression from where it was till now, which is amazing, but it's most importantly to actually use ballroom participants or actually even know about ballroom culture, you know? So as far as Laomi and how she's approaching it, me personally, I probably wouldn't do and approach it the way she does, but this is, that is her platform. That is how she wants to maneuver and do her thing. By all means, she can do that. She is a qualified person to do that and make those statements. She is an icon in the scene. Whether you hate her, you got to respect it. It is what it is. And keep in mind, you guys, also note, Laomi is not the be-all, say-all of Vogue Femme. She's just not. Newsflash. She is not the be-all, say-all of Vogue Femme. If she doesn't like it or if she, it is a chop, that is just her opinion. There are so many more icons and legends that actually are on panels that vote the same way she's going to vote. And they might have a different perspective. It is what it is. Me being on several panels myself, I personally enjoyed Anitra's performance. She is on a drag race competition that wanted to showcase many of her talents. It was a talent show. She showcased Taekwondo, Vogue Femme, a comedy skit, a performance in literally 30 seconds to a minute. And she had to be the best out of a group of 16. She did amazing to me. I have seen many a contestants on Drag Race from each season, each franchise, try to do a duck walk, a dip, catwalk, all of that stuff. And many has not had it. Many has not had it. There have been one, maybe two other queens that has had it, but nobody has had it like that. Anitra, you did that duck walk justice. You landed that dip. You gave a great performance. And that's why, to me, you deserved that win 
on episode two. It is what it is. That is my opinion. Laomi has a different opinion. I actually contacted Laomi and sent her a message saying, hey, I just want to, you know, hey, what's going on, babe? I just wanted to see, um, I wanted to know a little bit more depth because honestly, that's just me. I like to go to the horse's mouth and everyone's talking. I wanted to see what she had to say about it. I said, I wanted to know exactly who are you meant, who are you referring to specifically about the drag race situation of appropriation and, um, and noging. Um, I wanted to know that in particular, right? Because I wanted to know if she was mentioning Anita or some other queen, because I don't know. Right. So she, she thought it was a funny, com funny question and I instantly loved it. Right. So it is what it is. Um, and she really didn't answer the question. So I just left it as, okay, girl. She just thought it was a funny situation. Now, as far as for me, I probably wouldn't have said it in the way that she did. I probably would have elaborated a little bit more. But honestly, she comes from an age of where you didn't elaborate on stuff. You said what you said. You mean what you said. And it is what it is. She comes from an age of Ashley Icon judging you, Tony Revlon judging you, R.R. Chanel judging you, rest in peace, Tony Milan judging you. You know, and it is what it is. Nobody questioned them. And if they did question them, they'll get shashayed away off that stage very quick. Sometimes get beat down over it. It is what it is. A ballroom is cutthroat. She comes from a from a cloth that is cutthroat ballroom. That is just her and her DNA. That is exactly how I come. That's why I can handle all of the, you know, oh, different opinions. Oh, I'm wrong about this. Oh, whatever. You know, and all these comments that, that are coming for her about, you know, who she is as a person. She's evil. She's spiteful. She's, you know, she's vindictive. She's just not a nice person. Girl, it is what it is. Honestly, you guys have to understand. That's just that's just how she vocalizes her opinions. I mean, she probably had a, a lot of trials and tribulations in her past and that she's still stuck in that, you know, it is what I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't care because I don't pay too, too much attention. I just I just congratulated her on Legendary and doing her thing. May, may that Legendary still be a success on a different platform. And I hope nothing but the best for everybody in ballroom, period, point blank. But at the end of the day. Ballroom is cutthroat. If you want to join ballroom, join ballroom. It is what it is. But to Anita, in my opinion, I think that you slayed it. I think that you did a great job and bravo to you. I don't think that, do I think that it was a good Vogue Femme performance? No, this is why I don't think it was a good Vogue Femme performance. Because to me, a good Vogue Femme performance consists of all of the elements. You're going to give me a catwalk, camp performance, spins, dips, and floor performance. That's a good Vogue Femme performance to me. You didn't do all five, but you didn't need to do all five because that's not what you're doing. You're not, you're not walking a ball for a grand prize for ballroom. You're competing in drag race for the crown for $200,000. And the category was um, a talent show. You showcased your talent, three different variations of talent, comedy, taekwondo, and voguing. And you broke it down to let us know what a duck walk looks like. And honestly, the duck walk looked fine in my eyes, personally. The, the dip, you landed it great in my eyes. And it is what it is. There's so many icons and legends in the ballroom scene that will have a different perspective. And that is okay. I think we come in a day and age of we have to like, we have to like agree with everything. We have to no. sometimes we just don't agree with everything. I might not like something and somebody else might like it. And it is what it is. We're, it's okay to agree to disagree. It's okay for that. And also, lastly, I want to tell everyone, ballroom is for everyone. But keep in mind, know your history, know what came before you, appreciate it, practice it, perfect it, study it, and, and, and perfect your, your craft, whatever it may be, runway, Vogue Femme, all of that stuff. Just know what you're doing. Be invested into it. Because when I was a part of it, it was family-based oriented. I Maybe I don't know what it is now because to me it seems very commercialized. But that's a different video in general. But, um, you know, when I was doing it, it was very family oriented. And we all stuck together and we perfected our craft and we all were in tune with one another. And we knew our history even before me. From Paris, Paris's burning days, you you would have to know all that stuff to appreciate to continue doing what you're doing, right? So again, by all means, have a tough skin, 
And um, don't be so sensitive to critiques and criticism because it's going to be harsh. It's just the reality of the situation. Ballroom is harsh. It was a good crash course for me for life. That's what I always said and I always will say. Growing up in ballroom, it was a crash course for life because it was cutthroat and it was real and it's so many different variations of what I might run into in, in life. And it's the truth. And I'm so grateful for ballroom. So grateful. It made me who I am today. So, um, so people that have harsh criticism about critic criticism about Laomi, just know, um, I don't think that she's an evil person. I just think that she just has a very stern way of showing her opinions. It is what it is. And, um, Anitra, again, you did that, babe. Congratulations. I loved it personally. Another legend loved it. So it is what it is, honey. And that is all I have to say about this. All of my social medias, my website, my Patreon, my P.O. box are going to be listed down in the description. So make sure you check that out. Please give this video a thumbs up because a thumbs up goes a very long way, you guys. Hit that subscribe button, that notification bell so you know exactly when I upload. And if you guys want to join my YouTube membership family, just click the join button right next to my name underneath this video. And I will be doing the live recap this Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with Mother Gia Tishi, um, recapping Drag Race Season 15, episode number three. So make sure you stay tuned in for that. And like always, you guys, life is your vision. It is whatever you make it as long as you make it freaking fabulous. Until the next one, you guys. Bye.